What's up guys? I'm Jesse, this is Melissa, and this is Adventure Endeavor. We are currently here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, no, I'm just kidding. We're actually in Southern California. We are at my parents' house, and we wanted to take the time to talk to you guys about... Mood stocking. Mood stocking. What it is, proper etiquette, and all that kind of stuff and basically everything we can think of and uh, everything that we do when we are going to be mooch stocking. Yeah, so all of the important things to know in advance and to know when you are there set up mooch stocking at your friends or family house. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button and at the end, if you enjoy the video, please give us a thumbs up. So first and foremost, you might be asking yourself, what is mooch stocking? Well, Mooch docking is very similar to boondocking. You most of the time aren't gonna have any hookups, but it's when you're staying for free on friends or family's property or anyone that will let you stay. Yeah, I mean, basically it's anyone that will let you stay because you are mooching off of them. Essentially, you're getting a, a free stay. So it's similar to boondocking, but it's mooch docking. Got it? Okay, so probably one of the most important things, in my opinion, 100%. is knowing the length of stay that you are planning on staying at a location. Hey, uh, mom, dad, uh, I was thinking maybe we could mooch stock for like six months, a year, maybe five years or so. 30 days max? That's pretty generous, pretty generous. Jeez! So talk to your friend or your family member or whoever and say, you know, we would like to stay this long. I mean, some people are cool with three days, some people are cool with a week. So it all depends, but just know that length beforehand so everybody is in agreement and everybody knows exactly what's going on. And also you're gonna to wanna to know based on local city ordinance if it's okay to park your RV in their driveway or out in front of their house, for example. Um, and also if, if they happen to have an HOA in their neighborhood, you wanna know if that's okay to park your RV within as well. Yeah, you gotta check on all that kind of stuff. Where we are here, this is in the backyard, which is totally cool and it's quite nice. Yeah, so basically it just boils down to good communication with your friends or family. The next important thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you can get into the location no problem. For instance, this gate is somewhat narrow. It doesn't look it, but it is. And then secondly, we got these trees here that are actually fairly low. We had to trim some of them, which luckily my parents were super cool and they said, trim away, trim whatever you want. Another tip that we recommend is you can go ahead and look on Google, look on aerial imagery, um, look for low-lying trees, look for dead ends, look for cul-de-sacs, stuff that is gonna impede you getting into your friends or family's home. And it just makes life easier. You know, sometimes you might not be able to make a certain turn in or out a different way. So even if you have to drive it in a car first and then go there, that might be an option. The next step in mood stalking is minding your P's. And the three P's are... <laughs> the three P's! <laughs> Power, purified water, and poop. <laughs> I'm just kidding, we just made that up. But anyways... But it is really! This step is very important. You need to know whether uh, hookups will be available or not. So, where we are, obviously you can tell right here, uh, the third P. We don't have a hookup for the third P, which is the poopy. So we're basically dry camping. So he does have an area to dump um, the rig, but basically we go about two weeks and then we can dump the rig by using, you know, copious amounts of sewer hose and we make it work. Basically anyways, we make it work. Yeah, it's not really set up in a good spot he... to uh, keep it hooked up all the time. So we know that it's here if we need it but we don't keep it hooked up. Yeah, so so no, mind your peas. Uh, another pea for us is purified water. We obviously have our own filters and he has water spigots on location and they're easily accessible. We are still just filling our tank and just running it like we're boondocking. We could just hook up to water, but then we have the issue of our gray tanks filling up quicker because we won't be conserving as much. So it all depends on the length of stay and then power for us, this location is, well, every location is simple because we have solar. So everything runs, everything works. It has been pretty dang hot here and I wish we had a plug, but unfortunately he does not have a plug 
uh, 50 amp plug so we cannot plug in our AC. Yeah, so that's important to know. Um, probably most of the time if you're mood shocking you're not gonna have a 50 or 30 amp plug to plug into so just keep that in mind. So mind your peace. And if you don't Make sure it's okay with your friends if you run your generator. Yeah, and mind your peace. And mind your peace. So we just want to touch back on that power that we talked about. So last summer we were, well, yes, last summer we were in New Hampshire at my cousin's house and he's an electrician and he said that it would be fine. He took one of his RV cords and he spliced it off and he converted it down basically changing the power and the power on the house was fine that's something to be very aware of as well is if it can support like if you put a tiny plug and then you try to run your AC you're probably gonna melt the cord this is a very common issue this happens a lot but anyways we experienced that and it wasn't hooked up properly we forgot a little something something there I don't really know because I'm not an electrician I just trusted my cousin unfortunately still love you cuz but stuff happens and unfortunately we fried the converter in our old rig so be very very careful of power and usage and uh, don't melt cords don't fry your converter all that kind of stuff as with any camp location it's important to know what kind of internet connectivity you're gonna have before you get there whether you can use your friends or your parents or your families Wi-Fi, if they have any sort of cell reception at their house, whichever cut carriers you have, make sure that you will have service there, um, and whether or not you can use their Wi-Fi and how far the Wi-Fi signal reaches. You might find yourself having to go into their house to get a stronger signal, so be prepared for that type of scenario. So you want to be a good neighbor when you're mood stalking, and by that we mean pick up after yourself leave a clean camp so don't leave trash all over your friend's yard yeah. um pick up your dog poop you know offer to cook some meals and go out and grab groceries or run a few errands for the person who you're mooch talking from yeah i mean i'm a fairly handy guy uh thanks to my parents and Whenever I'm here, I'm always offering to help. I mean, maybe not as much as they would like. We'll see if they leave a comment on this video. But I try to help out wherever I can. If I'm going to the store, hey, do you guys need anything? You know, because sometimes if you just need something small, you don't want to go out to the store. But if somebody's going, no big deal. So what Melissa said, be a good neighbor, help out. We always offer to cook meals and whatnot and share leftovers and all that. And you know, you're with family, you're with friends. Exactly, and it never hurts to leave a thank you note when you're leaving. Oh, do we do that? I've done that with a few people. Okay. Not your parents. She does stuff like that. Actually, I did bring your mom some flowers the other day. Just as a thank you gesture. Oh, that's nice. Maybe you should let me know that you you did that. Hey, babe, I, I brought your mom flowers. Oh, cool. Are you going to take all the credit for that? Yeah, because it was all me. Well, thank you for watching, guys. These are our top mood stocking tips. If you follow these tips, you'll have a great experience. Everyone will be happy because, you know, the last thing you want is somebody to be sour after a stay. So, you know, do all that stuff we just said and you'll have a great time. Yeah, you want to be invited back. You want to be a good neighbor. You want to have a good experience with your friends or family. So, you know, follow these tips for a, a good time. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. <laughs> what was that? It was an explosion. And subscribe to our channel like that. Oh, and turn on notifications too, guys, because sometimes we post videos and we don't want you guys to miss them. Thanks for watching.